Hey guys, welcome back. Today I'm going to share all of my seed organizing with you for a successful seed starting year. I'm really excited to do this. I always tend to do this around the end of December. That way if there's anything I need to get started around beginning, end of January into February, I know exactly what I need to do. It also gives me a little bit more of an idea of what's going to be in and out of my garden at certain times, and it makes full-blown garden planning that much easier. So my seed organizing is actually one of the first steps I do when it comes to my garden planning. So I like to organize in these little photo organized containers here. I got this one off of Michael's and they are currently on sale for $15. If they're not on sale, they average right around 40. So watch, they go on sale all the time. But I really, really love these organizers because it comes with 16 compartments that are four by six and they fit seeds really really nicely I needed a little bit of extra room I thought the floor would be a better area to do this okay so I have my iPad here so I can give you guys a little bit of like insight exactly on the dates so I have these eight containers here I have some painters tape on just the outside where when these are laying up I can see whatever's written here and I can also write any notes or anything here on the front as well. I like using painter tape on outside of containers because it's really easy to just take off at the end of the year and restart. Um, it really helps organize. So I date these by lengths before my last frost, but I actually don't do my last frost. I actually push it out by a few weeks. So one thing you want to know when it comes to doing any type of seed starting, if you are new, is you want to find when your average last frost date is. For me, that is April 16th here in Kansas, and I actually wait to plant out any of my frost tender items until about the first week of May, end of April, that time period there. Average means average. So I like to give myself a two week window there. Kansas can stay cold, but it can also stay warm. Um, but I like to give myself that buffer just so I'm not stressing about anything getting too cold outside and potentially being ruined. So I will date everything from like that first week of May. So I break these into eight categories. My eight categories, I have to have a little cheat here, is anything 12 weeks before my plant date, 12 weeks before my plant date, 10 weeks before my plant date, eight weeks before my plant date, six weeks before my plant date, four weeks before my plant date, direct sow four to two weeks before my last average frost, and then direct sow anything after my last average frost slash my plant date. So what I do when looking up my planting date, so I like to just throw into Google, what is my average last frost for the city I live in, USA. That will give you an idea of your average last. Like again, I go a few weeks after that just to be safe that my no frost will be in the forecast. Um, I have in the past started my seeds early enough to where they could be planted out by that average or that average last frost date. And I've always noticed that waiting a little bit longer to start your seeds sometimes is the best case because if it ends up staying cold and your seeds are already advanced, you can just cause them to be stressed inside a little too long. So again, that's another reason why I like to wait that few weeks. So for me, again, my date I'm going off of is April 30th to May 5th. That is going to be when I am planting my plants in the ground. All I do is type into Google 12 weeks before April 30th what's that date which is february 5th so we're gonna write february 5th to february 10th and that is 12 weeks before one mistake i made when doing seed starting my first few years i think it was my first two years is i just started all my seeds at the same time i really had no idea that certain crops were more seasonal how they like to be in the cold and whatnot i was just going for it i was like all right well we gotta plant these let's plant all of these today i have one day to do this um, but breaking it up like this is really helpful that way you're not doing hundreds of seeds at one time breaking it up like this I throw everything back into my container and I'm like, all right, what's what it's February 5th. What do I need to plant today? So I will show you guys all that. Let me get the rest of this. So now that everything has a date, I'm going to go through each 
seed packet that I plan to grow and I am going to put them in said category. So my onions here start inside 10 to 12 weeks before. So I actually will start these right before 12 weeks. So these will be the end of January. Editing Brie here. I messed up my onions slightly. I knew something felt off. So onions will be planted out roughly three to four weeks before it by average frost. So you want to do 12 weeks before that date, not the average um, last frost date when it comes to onions. So instead of my onions being planted the end of January, they're actually going to be planted here in the beginning of January. Honestly, about probably the first week of January, like once we get out of Christmas, uh, that is when I will be planting onions. I heard myself talk back and I was like, wait a minute. So most flower varieties like zinnias are a four to six week period. Um, I'm gonna throw those at four because they tend to be pretty quick. Russian mammoths, any type of sunflower, you're going to want to direct sow. They just tend to do a little better. These are cold stratified. So yeah, I'm just gonna go through each one, three to four weeks. So we're gonna go more on the four week side on that as well. Last week when I did my seed haul with you guys, I mentioned that I would go through really quickly in today's video other varieties I plan to grow next year. So I'm not going to go in like full detail with this, but we will go through them real fast. So we have the Walla Walla Onion, we have the Flat of Italy Red Onion, we have the Australian Brown Onion, we have Lavender, Chinese Pink Celery, which honestly is an absolute favorite of mine. It's so, so beautiful. And I actually like that these stalks are, they are thinner stalk. It's really easy to grow. Um, super easy to chop. It freezes really well. I love pink celery. Um, I have the Etita, definitely pronouncing that one. It's an orange bell pepper. Then I also have the King of the North over here. We have jalapenos, serranos, bananas, we also have some white sage and dill, some oregano, parsley, basil, cabbages, kale, lettuce, lupas, calendula, marigolds, different zinnia varieties. I have a few wildflower varieties, rainbow gem corn, beets, thyme, cam chamomile, spinach, kohlrabi, clemson, okra, regular zucchini squash, um, and sunflowers. So, Bulk, I did a lot of shopping this year. I had a lot of things I ran out of and it was time to do a lot of stocking up. So I had a lot I needed to stock up on last week. I'm planning on starting my tomatoes this year, like a good month later. Again, um, tomatoes are just quite the pain to deal with when they're inside. Tomatoes will be small for a minute and the next thing you know, they're super large. And if you have cold coming in, it's just, it's not worth your time to be dealing with those plants inside. Trust me, um, I've made that mistake the last two years, even though I've pushed back my planting time multiple years. So last year I actually um, got new grow lights that were more powerful and everything ended up being more advanced than I would have liked. Um, unfortunately, so <laughs> this year is another reason why I'm starting just a little bit later than I did last year. The only seed variety actually that I do not follow the instructions on is Lufa. Lufa, it is directed to like not start inside. When I didn't start inside, I had terrible, terrible, terrible luck. I started my seeds last year, four to five weeks before I planted them out and it was amazing. They did so well. So I'm gonna do that again. I figured if those plants would have died that I started inside, then I could still direct so, but I liked having those ones just four to six weeks. Wow, that one's a four to six week variety for tomato. That's crazy. Where's this one? Mm -hmm. 
All right, so it looks like I'm gonna do my tomatoes closer to six weeks and not eight weeks. I got everything organized into the category. So all I'm gonna do here now is simply put all of the seed packets that are going to be started in that date in the compartment. So when I go to start seeds, I just have to pull out each individual compartment and then I don't have to worry about what I am possibly needing to plant next or going through all of my stuff once again. Okay, and now with all of these other varieties that I have scattered through here, some of these are, per, I actually wanted to throw this one, I need to look that up. Um, some of these are perennials I no longer need to plant. Some of them are varieties I don't plan to grow. Others are duplicates of seeds that I have. I have multiple packs of seeds um, for some of my varieties. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna go through and categorize these by variety. That way, for any reason, whenever I get done with all of my seed starting, I actually go back through and reorganize these back out through variety. That way throughout the summertime into fall, if there's a variety I'm needing or a type of plant I'm needing to direct sow, I can just grab that type of variety real fast and then I'm not going through a million seeds again uh, looking for certain types. So I will break the rest of the seeds out I might not be using them right now, but you honestly never know. And that's one reason why I like to organize these as well while I'm doing all of this. You will see I have a lot of herbs because a lot of herbs are perennial. Ooh, I have quite a bit of catnip over here that I should plant as well. See, this just re -goes, This just allows me to re-go through a lot of the seeds I currently have and make sure there was nothing else I really wanted to pull out either. Like right here, I have wheatgrass and some catnip. I'm gonna start these inside for the cat and that way she can be happy. I do have um, catnip that's been planted outside for years. Catnip here is a perennial as well and it lasts really, really well. So this just kind of gives you an idea of exactly how things are organized with my seeds. You can see end of January into February, March, into when I will be direct sowing in my garden toward mid to late April, and then when I will be direct sowing come May. This honestly just takes a lot of the guesswork out for me. So I hope this gave you guys some insight on how I organize my seeds and go about seed starting. I will be doing a ton of garden planning and seed starting videos come the beginning of the year, so make sure you're subscribed for that. I will say though that this is my last video for the 2022 year. I will be taking the last week of December off for the holidays. So I hope you guys have a great holiday season and a great new year, and I will see you all in 2023. Bye guys.